What's up, guys? This is Kefis. In this video, I am going to showcase some new macros that I have created for World of Warcraft using a mod called Gnome Sequencer Enhanced. This mod allows you to create extremely powerful macros that can perform most if not all of your rotation with a single button. This can be extremely useful for individuals like myself who has a disability or for people who just want to be lazy. So keep in mind that these macros are created primarily for those who are playing the game at a more casual level, but feel free to use them and alter them as you see fit. If you have further questions about the mod or my macros, I recommend checking out my FAQ video, and if you'd like to learn more about how to play the class in question, you might want to check out my crash course. It can help get you started. And I will provide links to all of these things in the description below. Okay, so today we're going to take a look at the macros that I've created for Unholy Death Knights. Now, Unholy Death Knights are a little bit more tricky to macro, uh, but they're not impossible. It's just, uh, just the nature of the abilities and uh, just a heavy reliance on using your modifiers, stuff like that, to make them work. But anyway, let's go ahead and get right into it here. We're going to type slash GS to open up Gnome Sequencer. And we're going to scroll down and you'll see there are two macros for Unholy. Unholy A for AoE and Unholy S for single target. Let's go ahead and open up the single target one first. We'll show you what it's all about. So it does do a lot, though. I'm pretty happy with what it can do. Okay, so if you don't have a pet, you, we, the macro will use Raise Dead. And that will summon your ghoul for you. So if your ghoul dies, the macro should summon him right back. And then, of course, it's going to send your pet to attack. Now, if you hold down Shift the macro will use Outbreak, and that's so that you can apply and reapply your Virulent Plague, and so that's how that's going to work. So if I put Outbreak in the macro outright, it's just going to be spinning your runes on Outbreak unnecessarily, and I just don't like how that works. So um, you can hold down Shift to use Outbreak, or of course you could also use Outbreak on a separate button entirely, okay? So um, one of the problems that I came into is running out of modifiers, but we'll, we'll get into more of that in a little bit, okay? So next up, it's going to use Dark Transformation on cooldown. If you choose Unholy Blight, the macro will use that on cooldown. And what's cool there is Unholy Unholy Blight will apply Outbreak. So that if you do have Unholy Blight, the macro can use that one on cooldown because Unholy Blight does have a long cooldown. So you'll get like one Unholy Blight in and then like you'll probably use one Outbreak before you'll use one Unholy Blight again. So, um, so that's kind of cool. It kind of limits the amount of Outbreaks you have to worry about, which I kind of like that. But, uh, of course, you want to try and, uh, you know, get Unholy Blight to go with Dark Transformation as much as possible. And that really should work with the macro because they're macroed together in sequence. They go right after one another. So that should happen for the most part. Now, next up is Unholy Assault. The macro will use this ability on cooldown, followed by Death Coil. I put Death Coil up to try and make sure that that runic power is not getting wasted. Also, that Sudden Doom is, you know, you're getting the most out of Sudden Doom, so that's how that's going to work. And then up is the last line, and this is where all the other, all the Festering Wounds are being taken care of. So, by default, the macro is going to be using Festering Strike, okay? And then when Festering Strike and when you've applied, you know, your 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 wounds, you can hold down control to use Scourge Strike, or you can hold down Alt to use Apocalypse. So this allows you to choose, you know, you can use Festering Strike to build up your, you know, your Festering Wounds, and then use Apocalypse when that's available, and then Scourge Strike when that one's available. Now, the only trick and challenge I can see here is that, you know, you want to try to keep track of your Apocalypse uh, cooldown. You can use a weak or there or something. You could just put Apocalypse on your action bar separately so that way you can kind of keep an eye on it so that way you know when it's available. So, you know, ideally, you know, you'll use Festering Strike and then use Scourge Strike as quickly as possible. You don't want to, you don't need to really cap out your Festering Wounds. However, if you're in a situation where Apocalypse is available, you want to use Festering Strike probably at least two times to get at least four Festering Wounds so that you can use Apocalypse. So you want to keep an eye on your Apocalypse cooldown, but the macro will manage it by hitting Alt. Okay, so that's basically how that's going to work. Pretty straightforward stuff. Works out pretty simple. Um, if you move down here into Key Release, you've got your cooldowns, Summon Gargoyle if you've chosen that one as a talent, and then of course Anti-Magic Shell. And that is, you know, Anti-Magic Shell is more of a defensive cooldown, but it will generate runic power. So I like to use it pretty much all the time whenever I'm in, in combat. So you can remove that if you want to use it separately or whatever, but that's basically how that's going to work. Summon Gargoyle, same thing. If you like, if you don't want to use it on cooldown, you want to use it at a certain, you know, 
point in time. You can remove it from the macro, use it separately, but uh, that's basically everything that this macro does. Like I said, it does quite a lot. Uh, there are a couple of towns that we're going to go over, and then, of course, there's a, one other major thing, and that's AoE. And cool, of course, there's a couple of things about that, so we're going to go to um, Unholy A, and there's a couple of extra abilities. So basically, we've switched out Death Coil with Epidemic. Uh, originally, I wanted to use a modifier for this, so like you'd hold down Shift to use Epidemic instead of uh, Death Coil, but with all these modifiers already being used, I figured it was better just to make a separate macro entirely, especially when you consider Death and Decay. And so the idea here is that Death and Decay will be used when you use the AoE macro, and it will be put at player, which is at your feet. So since you're a melee, you know, fighter you're going to generally be using death quill right where you're standing right where all the enemies are so it should for the most part work now keep in mind if you're not in range to use it don't start spamming the macro until you're close enough uh, to use it because otherwise they're just going to put it right where you're standing which sometimes may not work out so well so if you don't like that if you like having more control over where your death and decay goes you could totally use it on separate buttons i get i want to say this i get this suggested a lot to just use that cursor instead of at player uh, but that doesn't work really well in my opinion in a macro because you're spamming a macro you're using a bunch of different abilities and you don't exactly know when death and decay is going to be used it's going to be used at some point but you can't just keep your cursor you know right at that point where you want to use it at all times you're going to be moving your cursor around to select different targets to select different things using something in your bags god knows what you're doing but generally speaking i don't think that using at cursor um you know, commands in a macro that uses multiple abilities is a very, uh, very, you know, effective means to use that that ability. Now, if you wanted to use that on a separate button, maybe that would work. But I, I personally don't like using at cursor macro or at cursor commands in a gnome sequencer sequence macro, if that makes sense. So it, I don't use it. So it, I get that suggestion a lot, but just for those of you that might be thinking to suggest that, I just as a rule of thumb, I don't use at cursor. Uh, you know commands in my macros so just just keep that in mind but you can do that if you want to you can totally come in here and switch it if you want it's entirely up to you uh but just just you know make sure you know where your cursor is at when you do it also i play with console port so uh at cursor doesn't work for me either because I'm, I'm playing with a controller and console port so you know it's not, not my, also not the most efficient but anyways i just wanted to get that out there for people that have suggested that quite a lot but anyway um that's pretty much everything you need to know about these macros of course you've got a single target one an aoe one and i, I feel like they work out pretty well just keep keep track of your modifiers keep track of your you know your outbreak debuffs your, your festering wounds and all that kind of stuff and the modifiers should help you it, it's not exactly a one button because there is a heavy use of modifiers here and it's even then it still took two macros but overall i feel like they do work fairly well so let's go ahead and look at talents this is where a couple of other other little challenges came into play um uh, first off abilities like clawing shadows which replaces scourge strike and defile uh, which replaces Death and Decay, will work in the macro. The macro will use them in place of those abilities as if the macro had those abilities names in them. In fact, I believe the, the names of the abilities do actually change in the macros, which is very convenient, so that works out pretty well. The only other ability that I can think of that really should we should talk about is uh, Soul, uh, Soul Reaper. So this ability costs one rune it also has a short cooldown but it's mostly effective whenever your target is below 35 percent health you can use this ability at any time but if i put this in the macro it's just going to be using it every six seconds it's going to spend your rune on it and it doesn't really work now this could work with a modifier of course i've used up all the modifiers uh so if you're going to be using soul reaper just unfortunately you're just going to have to use it on a separate button um, the only other thing I could think to do would be to create a third macro uh, with Soul Reaper included in that one, and that would be like one that you use whenever the target is below 35% health. But otherwise, I mean, it's just it doesn't it doesn't work well with the macro with how the ability works, unfortunately. So I don't really know like how to fix that other than just to suggest you know maybe using it on a separate button. But otherwise, you guys, that's pretty much everything about these macros and how they work. Let me know what you think about them in the comments below, and I will see you guys on the next one. And that's basically everything you need to know about these macros and how they work. Remember, these macros work best when they are spammed, so either press the button as fast as you can or use a rapid fire button, which is fair game as long as you're the one pressing the button. As powerful as these macros are, they are far from perfect. So if you want to play the game at a high level and get the most out of your class, I highly recommend that you play the game without these macros.
But if you'd like to get started with GNOME Sequencer Enhanced, you can do so by downloading and installing the mod. A link can be found in the description below. Along with it, you will find pastebin links for any macros featured in this video. If you'd like to use them, simply click the link and you'll be taken to a raw pastebin of the macro. Select the entire macro, copy, log in to the appropriate class, type slash GS to open the GNOME Sequencer screen, click on import, paste the macro into the available space, make sure that automatically create macro icon is checked, and click import. You can now drag the icon to your action bar and the macro is ready to be used. If you followed all the steps correctly, the macro should be working fine. If something isn't working, start over and make sure that you follow all the steps correctly. If you are having further issues, I recommend that you check out the mod page or contact the mod's author for more information. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, let me know by clicking that like button. And feel free to share it with your friends so they can enjoy it as well. And if you'd like to see more videos, you can subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to be notified as soon as new videos are posted. You can also follow me on Facebook, and if you'd like, you can support my work on Patreon. Links to all that stuff can be found in the description below. This is Kefis, until next time.